even if you've taught a play retrieve or the retrieve where um, you know they're they're doing keep away and you turn that into a retrieve you still want to shape a retrieve I did that with Lola had a great play retrieve and she she learned to do her dumbbell by watching other dogs but if you don't have a shape to retrieve and one piece of it breaks down you have no way to fix it when you've shaped a behavior and you've broken it down into little tiny pieces if something happens it's relatively easy to break it down and fix it if you've just got one big behavior that all just happened at once like let's picture Lola Lola was here one day and I was playing with shaping and retrieve and she yeah we we didn't quite have it she was putting her mouth on it whatever and there was a class in here throwing dumbbells and Lola was like what are they doing and I let her watch and she got really keen like whoa so I asked somebody if I could borrow a dumbbell and I held her and I threw the dumbbell she ran out got the dumbbell brought it back in like I could do that what the heck and she's had a retrieve on that ever since but I have no way I had no way of working on little pieces of it you know the the, it, the send the the sit in front holding it longer sit in front I had to then break it down and teach her each little piece of it so when I needed it in competition I had ways of making each little piece of it powerful whoa good oh boy hey yay back her fright criteria is put your front feet on the target back All right so she knows this exercise. I didn't just suddenly decide to do it. <laughs> Back. Watch this one. Back. Switch. Back. Oh. <laughs> Good girl. Very nice. All right. So by when I first get them to back up a little bit, the way I start this is right here. And they start offering when they can do it from right here. They go back one step and they hit the target. Then I just start to add a little distance and, and, and gradually make it longer and longer. Come, honey. Nice. And just gradually, I would stay at each of these lengths a lot longer than I'm doing. What works really good for this is a narrow deck to teach them to go straight. Back. And, and I would shape it before I, I mean, I would just have her backing up without actually saying it in the beginning. I'm really skipping a whole bunch of stuff here. Back. And I don't like that. I'm not clicking that one. Not your fault at all, honey, but back. I want, I want that's what I want. That's my criteria. I'm not going to take a slow, slovenly back. If she misses the target, I'm not clicking that. I want her to back up straight. Beautiful behavior. Jackie, keep going this time. When you feel her start to go, go with her. Keep backing. You can click, but keep backing. There, don't forget to click. Good job. I know it's a lot to remember. You ready? Chin. No! I think that's called Frankenstein, isn't that, Laura? Chin. Oh, yes. Nice. And this is the first time we've gotten duration on chin today. Uh, it's the first time we've tried the duration on Chin, and she's picked it up pretty quick. Chin. Go, go off. One more. Chin. That's good. Here, it's unstable. Beautiful. Very nice. Raise your criteria until the dog will happily and promptly reach for the object and give it back no matter where you place it. Make sure you keep your hand on the object as your dog is going to take it in his mouth and then give it back. Because the longer you do that, the clearer the criteria is you have to put it in my hand. Some people don't care if dogs retrieve to their feet. They must not have my knees. 
because I'm not real happy about dogs that retrieve to my feet. I want it in my hand. I don't want to bend over. I want it in my hand. When your dog will reach for and bite the retrieve object, when it's resting on the floor or a chair, it's time to take your hand off the object. So once you've got them following it in here, you go down to the floor and you let them do the same thing down the floor. And each new thing, you may have to lower your criteria a little bit. Every time you add a new element, you may lower your criteria. Some dogs will make massive jumps and skip whole little pieces of it. Lucky you. Other dogs will go do to do to do and then get stuck. Or, and some dogs will just go slowly through the whole thing. You can see how your dog learns. You'll see how they process information. Um, once you take your hand off the object, you go right back to square one. If they look at it, click and treat. If they nose it, click and treat. Any interaction with it. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, praise your criteria until your dog will put his mouth around the object and begin to lift it. Once they start doing those little lifts, that's your beginning of your, of your retrieve without your help. Little lift, little lift. Once they're lifted up three or four inches off the ground, you have to try to start to catch it. Once you can catch it fairly regularly, you do not reward anymore. No more clicks if you can't catch it. Has to be in your hand. I'm sorry you lifted it. I couldn't catch it. All right? And you, and you don't pick it up. You look pitifully at it. Like, oh, dear. Oh, and you look at your hand pitifully. You know, a little acting is good. And then, when you can regularly catch the object, you'll no longer click unless the object is in your hand. Let's see what's next. When your dog can regularly lift the retrieve object high enough that you can catch it, you can begin to shape a reliable hold. How do you shape a reliable hold? Hesitate. He's used to you lifting up and catch it. Don't catch it so fast. Oh, dropped on the floor. Sad. And then, so, so you reach more slowly for it until they realize, oh my gosh, I have to hold on to it long enough to get it into your hand. You know, if the object falls to the floor, do not pick it up. Instead, gaze at it, wait for your dog to pick it up, hold it long enough for you to take it. Gradually increase the time you hesitate. Your dog is finally waiting and placing it in your hand instead of dropping it. And now you basically have a full retrieve.